Welcome to Apartment Syndication Made Easy Podcast, where we simplify the world of syndication. Join us as we unravel the complexities and provide you with valuable insights to help you invest smartly. Get ready to take your investments to the next level, one episode at a time. Here's your host, Mr. Vinny Smiles Chopra. Hi there, guys. This is Vinny Chopra again, getting ready for vacation. But last interview I'm doing here today with brother Chad. Chad Zednik is here and he's from LA. I'm from San Francisco. Many of you have been following, you know, Apartment Syndication Made Easy, which the new name now, it's Wealth Building and Luxury Lifestyle. Wow. Because I reached now from $7 to $1 billion. I just crossed it through AOM and my next two funds, 506C funds, I can tell you all about it. $100 million fund for hospitality. We have raised $27 million already in one month. And then my $100 million one in senior assisted living fund, we have raised about $34 million in that one in just last six weeks. So it's going to be fantastic. And I can tell you about it because it's 506C for accredited investors only. So brother Chad, how are you? Yeah. I'm doing good. And and I, I got a story I can share with you, Vinny, that you Please. probably don't know about. Oh. So you and I actually first met at Dealmaker Live in 2019. You were on stage with Michael Blanc. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was my my first real estate conference. And I wound up doing my first deal probably about I don't know, three months after that. Oh, wonderful. Um, and it's been off to the races. So I'm not at a billion, but I'm at 200 million under uh, assets under management now. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and it was great seeing on, on stage there. And then when, oh. when my assistant c- connected us on the, on the, your show, I'm like, yeah. I get to talk to Vinny again. And so it's been a long time and oh. uh, you probably don't remember it, but I remember you and I'm excited to be on your show. Oh, thank you. And congratulations, brother. That's amazing. That's crushing it. You know, 2017 or so you said, right? Up to yeah. now, six years. What a great accomplishment. You've done better than I have done. When I started 16, 15 years back, brother, it took me uh, 14 units, uh, 11 months to get my 14 units when I started in this business. I would love to share that with the audience because don't give up. Keep persistence, you know, rock and roll, get a coach, get a mentor, because that's what my coach was, David Lindahl. I mean, he did so good for me, you know, and I just can't, you know, thank him enough. And then Kim Lisa Taylor, my very good attorney and friend, she called yesterday. She's doing, she has revised her book and I want to promote that also for her. And she was saying she did my 26 PPMs, private placement memorandums, brother. So, you know, now I'm at 39, I'm at 40 and 41. Those are my two uh, funds, you know, but no, thank you. And so nice to see you again. So let's dig into it. I know you're, I want to give you full justice and kind of introduce you, you know, uh, again, you know, Q S Q prop C C S Q properties, freedom through passive income. I love that. Helping investors find freedom through passive income. And then like, you know, you're a licensed general contractor. Hold on. Oh my gosh. We'll talk a lot about it because I'm building hotels now and senior assisted living. Winnie, a syndicator turned into that. General contractor, professional engineer, a former CEO of the Mobile Illumination and triple master's degree graduate. And you started, brother, he started out in construction management in the mid 90s and working in the Swintner Builders uh, before moving into structural engineering technically. And then 2,000% in 15 years. I love it. He joined the Mobile Illumination uh, as CEO, helping to grow the company over 2,000%. I love that. Actually, I started with a motivational company, brother, with two companies. And I was there a long time. Some of the people know that. And we started 26 companies. From two to 26. So that was my little small thing, but with a lot of my other friends and all and fam. Uh, Okay, since being in the investing in seven years ago, he has grown his general partner portfolio to almost 250 million. Today, he invests actively and passively in multifamily. So we're going to talk all these 
different things and, you know, get into your uh, like superpower. So what's your superpower, Chad? I always ask that. Uh, that's a good question. I would I would probably have to say it's uh it's having an entrepreneurial spirit. So I, I've helped found or started six different companies. I had a good exit for my last one, uh, which I sold in 2018. And uh, and I love entrepreneurship, and that's what I'm doing with CSQ Properties. That's my my latest venture, although it's been several years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a development company called CSQ Development. Mm-hmm. And so I really love growing businesses. I like growing teams. And I, I don't know if it's a superpower, but it's definitely a passion of mine. I love it. I love it. I mean, you know, that's what I find. I think people who really become entrepreneurs, their mindset is really strong. It's building the people, building the business. I always say you never build buildings, you know, walls. You build the people in your teams and they are the ones who really catch your vision. And then the company progresses more and more and more and more like you are doing, you know, so that's great. You know, you're right. Entrepreneurship, anybody listening to us, guys, you got to get in that frame, even though you are a W2 job, but you got to be the CEO of your business after hours. You got to put the time. I mean, if I did, hadn't put the time with my coach and other things and my partners, I wouldn't be where I am and probably for you too, right? You know? Sure. So when did you do the shift from your W-2 to this business? Tell me that. Yeah. So, and my W-2 was like my own business, right? So I was I was uh, technically a, a rocket scientist for seven years working at Rocketdyne or at Rocketdyne on the space shuttle main engines. I did that for for seven years and then and then started a business with my brother, the mobile illumination company. I huh. uh, ran that for about 17 years wow. and then uh, and then he bought me out in 2018 and that's when I went back into real estate because I'd always wanted to get back into it. I was there you know it, from the construction side of things. Uh-huh. but really wanted to get get involved more as an investor and eventually a syndicator. I so I, I um I started doing it a lot, you know, well before I knew anything about syndication. Mm-hmm. Uh, but syndication, and I know you you teach this as well, it's, it's a great way to get involved, a great way to work with other people, great sure. way to take down bigger projects that normally you'd never be able to do on your own. And you do it through a syndication. And then the the limited partners of the investors they they don't have to get involved in any of the, of the the details of it right that's what the general partnership team does and that's where passive income comes from for them mm-hmm. and 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 my mantra is to help provide freedom through the passive income so i try to bring investors along in this journey i know you do the same as well uh, but we bring these investors along this journey to create these passive income streams for them whether they're retired or they still have their w2s Or maybe they're an entrepreneur doing their own thing, but it's really good to have these alternate income streams because you never know which which way things are going to go. And uh, and it's a good fallback plan to have something outside of what you normally do and something tied to real estate is is a great way to do that. Fantastic. Totally. You know, I talk about velocity of money. I mean person who keeps cash under the pillow or in the bank, it's an inflation of, you know, four to seven percent. That means hundred thousand is worth ninety three thousand next year. Then it's going to reduce even more and more and more. So yeah. people need to put them in good vehicles. Of course, stock market. You know how many people do mutual funds, index funds, all that precious metals and all cryptocurrencies. Uh, I saw. Did you say or somebody else? My previous investor. I mean, interviewed. They were saying crypto. I'm into crypto myself. But the thing is. You're right. You need to diversify. You got to make your money work. Like a lot of people have dead money in their properties, right? And a lot of time people say, I don't want to take a loan. But no, if you take the loan, you use the loan to not buy a Porsche or anything, but you use the money to invest to make more money. It's a good loan. You know, it's good debt, we call it, right? But you're so right. Let me ask you a question. In the Tier structure, I started doing it many, many years back, seven, eight, 10 years back, where my investors graduated from 100,000 to 250 to 500, brother. So as, as minimums? I gave You're them yeah, minimums, minimums, yep. 100 to 
249, they got certain pref return and certain IRR. At 250, I jumped it by one or two percent, and then more bigger IRR. And at 500, I jumped it even more. Mm. So my investors, I'm telling you, everybody listening to me, I mean, I'll tell you what I'm doing at the 50, 100 million dollar fund right now. But that's where they graduated, brother. They went from 100 to 250 because they wanted to make more. And we sure. did with conservative assumptions and everything, right? You got to make sure you have right assumptions. Uh, so do you do that with the limited partners yet or like tier? Yeah, so no, I don't. I do a, a flat. Generally, it's a 100K minimum and mm -hmm. it's the same class of shares. Okay. Uh, but the challenge with that, and, and I know you've experienced this, is most people want to do the minimum, right? You'll have 80% yeah. of the people will do the minimum yes. and they just want to be in a bunch of different deals. But that ends up being kind of a, a headache down the road because you're in 20 or 30 different deals and they're all 100Ks. And it, it, if you're wealthy, that's a it becomes a, a headache, right? Wow. So I really like your approach uh, to where, and it's, it's incentives, right? They're investing more, so they get more. Exactly. And all of a sudden, I imagine, you know, in, in my world, probably 80% of my people will do the minimums, even though it's 100K minimum. And that's yes. generally pretty universal. But as soon as you start throwing those extra tiers out, you yes. get a lot of people outside of that minimum. And, and I'm sure they invest quite a bit more. They will. They will, brother. Then I talked to Gene Trowbridge, who is the father of, you know, syndication. I said, Gene, there is somebody who's giving me cash of 100, but they have 150 in their retirement plan. He says, Vinny, if it's the same person, same family, they can count as 250 mm. legal terms. I said, nice. all right, beautiful. So I started yeah. promoting that, you know. So then Perfect. lots of my money came from in the retirement funds, you know. Yeah. Now, oh, my gosh, I don't want to blow everybody's, you know, turf over there. I see, I feel like the higher the investor level, more sophisticated, more accredited investors will be there and they don't have to wait for the cash flows, you know, to live upon and live on and everything, which is different. People have different goals, right? So my $100 million fund, because I have to raise so much money, I started at 100 to 500. I okay. took up 250, then million, then 5 million and 10 million. Wow. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So in, in your PPM documents, are yeah. you, do you have that as a separate class of share for each level? A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, brother. Got 100, it. 500, 1 million, 5 million, 10 million. Wow. I'll show you. I'll show you right now. I mean, you know, Vinny's got everything ready. <laughs> so this is the one. I mean, if, hey, guys, if you're listening to it, you could see the YouTube version of it because that's going to kind of show you, you know, what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to educate everybody now through all these things. Right. So I just I'm saving that over there, you know, and there, there you go. brother. I mean, I had to do it. You see right there. So I just do everything so quickly, you know, and then this is the yeah. one I just sent it. I just sent to my very big investors. They've been with me for so long. Hold on, Vinod. Okay, Ralph, Rajivji, right there. Oh, Rajivji, right there, right? I just sent it. So this is my victorious venture fund. Let's just kind of take you to into it, my world, right? <laughs> $100 million fund. And there it is, disclaimer, blah, blah, blah. It's fives. You know, I just want to take you there, right? And this is all diversifications and everything, everything. I just want to draw, stop right there. This is the one. Yeah. So my class A investors get paid first. It's a five or six C, by the way. Anybody looking at it right now in YouTube or wherever, I can talk to you about it and the returns and tell you everything without even knowing you because it's only for accredited investors only. I just want to, you know, disclaimer there. So sure. Class A1, right there, but it's 6% preferred plus upside 14% IRR. Aha. Mm -hmm. Class A2, 7% preferred plus the upside 15% IRR. And then these are the levels right there. The minimum investment for class A1 is 100, A2 is 500, A3 is 1 million, 
A4 is 5 million. And then A5, guess what? We got two people in 10 million. Wow. Just in the last month and a half, month, month, let's say month. And wow. they want to put even one family wants to put even 10 in one fund, 10 in another fund. That's amazing. That's totally amazing. It's it's the power of suggestion. It's the power of abundance mindset, you know, like yeah. that. And look what we are giving them, brother. Look at this. A5, they're getting 10% preferred plus upside 22% IRR, which is yeah. like 30%. Doubling their money, 10 million. Wow. Doubling their money in three years, brother. Three years. And, and, and not to get too much into the weeds here, no, but no, no. is the upside share, the same, it's just pro rata share the same between all the A, A class members? Yes, it is. It is. There's no but difference. The IRR. In takes yeah. them to a higher level, right? Yeah. So the IRR will give them higher returns from the equity share or the waterfall, we call it, refinance, yeah. right? Got it. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Wow. You know? Two $10 million investors. Whew. Two, two. And actually, somebody just told us, I'm going on a, I'm going to 30, 23 days vacation, but then coming back, going for six days trip into different, different cities. And we'll be meeting ultra, ultra rich people you know, who will be ready for us to have cocktails and all. And then we give a presentation to just those 15, 20, 30 people. So yeah. that's what we are doing, like Dallas and this and Philadelphia and Mississippi, New Orleans. Where do we go? Las Vegas, I think, is the last one. Panhandle wow. in Tampa will do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you when you started out with just seven dollars in your pocket, <laughs> did you ever think you'd be getting a ten million dollar investment from one person? <laughs> Never, never, <laughs> ever, ever, brother, I've ever thought about what is happening, really. I never could imagine ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm the guy, but you know what? I made a decision, though. I said, Chad, I'm not going to take 50,000. I've taken very few 50,000. I've lost some sales, by the way. Even very savvy people, they say, oh, we only put 50, 50, 50, 50, you know, in 300 uh, you know, different deals. I said, I'm not the right person for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with that hundred thousand because then I knew that if some peers, peer group is also the same, they are the sum total of five people, right? So that got me going into 100, 250. Our top investors have five million with me. Mm. One family. 5 million, 4.2 million, 3.6 million. I mean, they opened with 100, then they kept on going, you know. Wow. Tell me more, brother. Okay, tell me more about you. It's yours. So how, how people financial freedom, give us some of your nuggets, right? How do you sell to the investors? What some things are objections, let's say, so that, you know, the audience can kind of learn from us, right? You know? Sure. Yeah. And I, I think it's uh, there's a lot of objections in the market today. Right. I mean, we're, we're filming this in uh, May of 2023, and it's a very interesting time in, in the economy, in real estate. Yeah. And uh, and you, you got to be careful out there. Uh, however, I'm a believer that there's there's money to be made in all markets. You uh -huh. just have to be willing to make adjustments. Sure. Uh, change your business plan if needed yep. and really, you know, vet your deals really well. Uh -huh. So in in today's market, and I just closed, by the way, I just closed uh, last week uh -huh. on a, a $17 million um, self-storage portfolio. Oh, wow. So that was uh, 2,600 units in Texas, uh, outside of Houston, and uh, self-storage units now, not multifamily. And but I um, but for me, like I, I've been a big multifamily guy for a long time. And, and going back to your idea of diversification, I wanted to diversify a little bit out of multifamily. So for me, I really like the idea of self-storage and it tends amazing, to do well. Amazing target, brother. Yeah. Self-storage is way to go. You know, very, very nice. Multifamily is not having that same luster as it used to be. You know, the cash flows are not there. It's not really gone down yet. Foreclosures are coming. I'm talking to Neil Baba. He's a good friend of mine. He just lives 45 minutes away. So we had a one hour meeting today. It's ridiculous how lots of young people 
syndicators are in trouble right now because they cannot make the payments because the payments have gone so high with the interest rate and some of the bridge loans are coming due right now in next four to six months. So they will lose foreclosure two and a half months after that, all their money is gone, like 8 million. We were talking at one of the properties. Somebody raised 8 million. And if they go into foreclosure, they lose all 8 million and their yeah. share and everything. So maybe there will be some opportunities, people like you and me, where we could come to their rescue. But we have to see how the numbers will work with the new investors, if you bring in cash or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we have. I mean, in the next in the next uh, twelve to eighteen months, we're gonna have over a trillion dollars of that bridge debt that's yes. coming due. Yes. And and when people were underwriting that bridge debt, they said, "Hey, I'm gonna do a cash out refi at five percent." Yes. And instead of doing a, a cash out refi, they're gonna have to do a cash in refi at seven percent. So oh. meaning they're gonna actually have to put money into the deal, most likely, in order to save it. And they're going to do that via a capital call or maybe a GP infusion, because uh, otherwise you're right. They they risk losing losing the property and, and losing it all. So it is going to be a very interesting time coming up. Uh, and I do think it's very market dependent. Right. Like there still are there are plenty of markets in the country that are still have growth in the multifamily space with respect to rents, you yeah. know, low vacancies that's still out there for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But you do have to be careful, and and the underwriting underwriting has got to be really careful. Like, you know, you don't want to have variable debt right now, right? We don't know which direction that's going. So, sure. Sure. Um, like on my deal, we just closed last week. We have five year fixed debt oh. from Morgan Stanley. You know, what very interest rate? What interest rate did you get, brother? We did uh, seven and a quarter. Okay, seven and a quarter, five year fixed, solid. Morgan yeah, Stanley. So, so yeah, I mean, it's not. You know, it's it's, it's not, not a, that low, but it's not still low. It's okay. But yeah. if, if you can if you can underwrite to it, right? If you know it's this is fixed, I don't need to worry about it changing on me. And if yeah. you can underwrite to it and still get your returns, in this case, you know, we're doing about a ten percent cash on cash return. Yes. And I know that I don't have to worry about my debt. That's a big plus. You know, there's a lot of other things you got to look at, but those are like the big rocks that you got to start to figure out to see if a deal is going to make sense. Totally makes sense, brother. I just did uh, this uh, Knoxville property I bought. It's a little small for me, 107 units. But the mortgage went from 35000 a month last January to this January, 72000 32 to 72 because it was a variable bridge debt. So yep. I started talking to Freddie, I think, Freddie and Fenny. And now I just logged in 5.61 last month. And yeah, interest true. only for five years, 10 years fixed. But it's assumable. So I like that part of it. Even so better. Buyer, whenever somebody comes, you're right. So long term and fixed debt is the way to do it. You are so right about it. And then diversification. Thank you. That's so true. We got to diversify, you know, from going into storage units, mobile home parks. Dylan Marma, you know, he's a good friend of mine. He's into mobile home parks. Uh, I think uh, I'm trying to remember God of Kumkur. He's into storage units and some other things and you are into storage units. I've kind of deviated a little bit into senior assisted living and memory care. Yeah, sure. You know, that has been a big ticket for me because smaller unit size, but the rents are four times larger. And yeah. I can run them at 52% expense ratio because we are vertically integrated and all. And then also hotels. I'm getting a lot more into hotels now, which we, my partners have built in equity because they bought land cheaper and the permits are done and all that stuff. So tell me more. How can people reach you and any other stuff, you know, things you kind of give them power reading or, you know, what kind of apps you're using? Anything is a game here, you know? Sure, sure. Well, like we talked a little bit before about the entrepreneurial spirit. That's really who I am at the core. 
So mm-hmm. I really try to focus on helping entrepreneurs. So I actually wrote an ebook on why entrepreneurs should invest in apartments. Oh, good. Um, they can get that at my website, which is csqproperties.com. CSQ is in challenge status quo properties.com. Beautiful. But the idea is like, and, and you can probably relate to this because I know you've had an incredible entrepreneurial journey, but so many entrepreneurs they focus 100% of their effort on their business, right? That's all their energy goes in the business. You know, the blood, sweat, and tears, the 80-hour weeks, like that goes into their business. Mm-hmm. And, and then they, they, they take care of their customers first. They pay their employees first, mm-hmm. right? They, they take care of all their other expenses and they pay themselves last, mm-hmm. right? They pay themselves last. And invariably, the, these, these businesses will go through cycles just like any business, and when you're doing that, you, they're not taking care of themselves in a, in a very smart way, right? They're putting all their eggs in that one basket. So what I try to do is I try to open up the eyes of the entrepreneur and say, hey, stay focused on your business, but try to get another passive income stream going. Because I'll tell you what, at some point, your business will have a down cycle and you'll be glad that you had that other passive income stream. Mm-hmm. The other thing too, you could be like me where I sold my business and my my income went away 100%, right? I, I sold my business. I didn't have the income anymore. So, and, and I didn't have the passive income streams I wished I had. So that's why I'm trying to say, hey, even if your business is doing well, mm-hmm. put aside some money, create that passive income stream. And whether your business does, does poorly, you'll have the income streams. If you sell it, you'll still have the income streams. If the business continues to do well, you'll be diversified across different in, in, incomes. And that's really who I'm trying to help. I love it. Love it. So nicely put together, really. <clears throat> Chad. The other thing also, brother, I say to, you know, my investors, passive investors love to share that with everybody is that their hundred thousand is going to get a position of the whatever commercial building I'm buying or hotel or senior living or multifamily or storage units, 400,000 position because of the leverage. Because yes. the bank is going to give us 70 or 75% loan. So their 100 on the title of that property, they're going to control four times that, which is not the true thing in stock market. You mm-hmm. pay 100,000, you get Google worth 100,000 or Tesla worth 100 or Apple worth 100. So that's something also I like to say that, uh, you know, they are official uh, buyers. They are the owners, actually, limited owners, but they are on the title of the property. They are uh, owning a piece of that, which is a very different. But then leverage, you know, and tax, right? I mean, bonus depreciations and cost segregations and all that stuff. Yeah. It's remarkable because they get they get all the tax savings, even though the bank's putting in most of the money. But it's the investor that gets the tax savings. It's the investor that gets all the appreciation, whether it's forced appreciation or market appreciation. Right. All that stuff goes to the investors. So it really you can see why so many millionaires have been made from from real estate. Um, It's all these advantages that it has. And a lot of it goes to uh, the LPs or GPs. It doesn't go to the bank. Totally, totally. And, you know, I'm so glad you said it because when we do the waterfall refi or we sell it and build that strong equity, <clears throat> like the Princeton Park property in Melbourne, I'm selling, right? It's out of now. So 35 million, we paid it in December of 2019. I bought it with my partner, Sapan, and 50-50. And then now we are selling for close to 50 million. So 15 million gain, is going to go to investors. What? $11 million they're going to get. So that's going to be respectable. And then we're going to make pretty penny too. General partners, bank says, you know what? Just pay me the loan. (laughs) I love it. Balance of the loan. Not even the real loan because we paid it down. What a good deal. Yeah. Gosh. Bank comes and joins hands in real estate only, maybe other companies or businesses, maybe, but real estate and does not want any upside. That's yours. I love that. (laughs) This is so great. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Chad. It's such a pleasure, brother. And how can people reach you? And, you know, we look for 
you know, uh, knowing each other, meeting somewhere. I don't go to too many conventions. I don't because I have so much money flowing through my ears and my deals come. I travel only four times a year. That's all. And that also to my teams of people all, all across where I yep. have these, you know. So I you never see me on any seminars. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I I don't think I've seen you since that one in, yeah. uh, in 2019. So I, I do understand that, but I remember, I remember <laughs> Thank you're, you. you're very impressionable and I uh, think you've done amazing yeah. things for, for your investors and the content you put out. So uh, it, it's very good uh, for, for me. If people want to learn more is basically uh, at CSQ properties, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, I do put out quite a few videos. Um, I'll have to have you on my my podcast soon. Love return to the paper when you get back from your vacation. Yes, yes, um, please. But um, yeah, at CSQ Properties is the best way. Or if they want to download that ebook, is just csqproperties.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks again, you know, for showing and hanging out with me. And everybody, hey guys, if you like this episode, please share, comment, and, you know, give that five-star reviews. I didn't know that. My team just showed me our uh, podcast is in the top 1.5 percentile in the world, in the globally. What? I can't wow. believe it. I just Good can't job. believe it. I've been doing it just for the fun, you know, but it's rising higher and higher. But thank you, everybody who gives us written reviews. I look at them. I should actually ask my team to give it to me so that I can read them on some of the podcasts. I'll do that. You take care. We'll see you next time. And again, remember, oh my gosh, my Abundance Mindset Show, 9 a.m., Thursday morning, every Thursday live show, 16 or 18 channels. And then my Vinnie and Bo show Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific every week also, not on the vacation time, but I'll be again putting it out for you. So thanks so much. God bless you. Mm -hmm.